despite the massive, all-encompassing mercy of Allah the Almighty, and particularly on the Day of Judgment, where he has held 99 parts out of a hundred of his mercy reserved for that day. Yet, there will be people who will be punished on the Day of Judgment. There are different types or classes of people on the Day of Judgment who will receive different forms of punishments and the form of punishment is relevant to the type of sin and number of sins but one of the most difficult forms is a psychological one is when Allah Azza wa Jal forsakes and abandons the slave and does not speak to him nor look at him. Because by not doing so, it is an indication that Allah Azza wa Jal is angry with that slave. And it tells that slave what to expect afterwards. And its implication is that this slave will be thrown into the fire of hell to be purified. Amongst the different types or classes of people who are threatened not to be looked at, not to be spoken to by Allah is for men. The person who drags his lower part of the dress, whether it's a, a thobe, a garment, or trousers, or what have you, below the ankle bones. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will not look at the one who drags his garment below his ankle bones. Shaykh al-Uthaymeen, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, This is a special punishment because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will not look at the one who drags his thobe, his garment, to show off. I failed to say that in the first part. To show off. So he said, Rahmatullahi alayhi, whoever does so to show off is threatened to have this special type of punishment. And Allah Azza wa will not look at him. In addition, to dragging in itself being in principle haram. Why? Because the Prophet وسلم, told us, as in the book of Imam al Bukhari, whoever drags his thobe, his dress, below the ankle bones will be in fire. And this is general without restricting it to doing it as a way of showing off or with the intention of showing off. In another narration that is reported by an Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ listed three types of people. He said, there are three types of people to whom Allah Azza wa Jal will not speak on the Day of Judgment, nor will He purify them, nor look at them, and they will receive a, pain, a painful punishment. Look at all of that. What are these people? Number one, 
Sheikh Hunzani, an old man who commits zina, adultery or fornication. Malikun Kadhab, a ruler who lies. Wa'ailun Mustakbir, a poor person who acts arrogantly. Now, what is common between these three types of people? Though the sins are different, but there is something in common between these three, if you've noticed. The reasons for the sin either don't exist or very weak. Nothing calls for that sin. The first one, a very old man who commits zina. At that age, sexual desires, if they're not finished, they have subsided a lot. The person is wiser, controls himself, has more ration, weighs things and their consequences, and thus is less likely to do something like this. Actually very far from thinking of doing something like this. This is number one. Number two, a ruler who lies to his subjects or someone superior, a high authority, lying to his subjects or employees. There is no need. There is nothing for him to be scared of. He is the highest in rank and authority. There is no need. A poor person who acts arrogantly with others. Now being poor, being in need, when you need people, it makes you feel inferior to them. So there is no need, nothing to call for you or justifies you or that person rather, excuse me. Nothing justifies for that person to act with arrogance and pride. Just like there is no justification for that ruler to lie and there is no justification for that old man to commit zina. Another type which the Prophet ﷺ threatened with the same types of punishments will not be looked at on the Day of Judgment. Allah will not speak to, nor will He purify him, and he will receive painful punishment, is a person who, when selling something, makes a false oath in order to make that deal go. For example, someone is trying to sell something, I swear by Allah, this is perfect, there is nothing wrong in it. Now, there are things, there are defects in different products that when a person checks it or gets it checked, it not, might be discovered. People might not find it out. But that owner of that product knows. Now he swears to Allah, there's nothing wrong with this. It's perfect. Knowing that there is something wrong. So he lies in order to make that deal go. Or, when you walk up to him, I swear by Allah, brother. I swear by Allah. He had bought it, for example, for ten dollars, pounds, whatever. Right? I bought it for 14. Now, when he's offering it for 20, and he's telling you that he, and he swears to Allah, that he bought it for 14, you know that you will not go lower than that. So in order for him to make a profit or break even, you have to accept buying it at least for, for, for that 14 while he was lying. Another form, you walk up to him and you say, how much is this for? He says 20. And then you start bargaining. No, let's make it 16, let's make it 15. You know, I swear by Allah, brother, someone already offered me 17. He had not received any offer or he has not received that high offer. But he lies. He swears to Allah, lying. 
in order to make that deal go the way he wants. One of the most dangerous sins. Now, these sins, in general, with the exception of that last one, are sins that will impact the person himself. But the following one, and the last one, only impacts an individual or few individuals. But this one that I'm going to talk about now is something that can impact Masses of people concealing the truth, concealing knowledge. Allah says, Inna al-ladhina yaktumuna ma anzala Allahu min al-kitab wa yashtaruna bihi thamanan qalila ulaika ma yaakuluna fi butunihim illa al-nar wa la yukallimuhum Allahu yawm al-qiyamati wa la yuzakkihim wa lahum azabun alim Those who conceal what Allah has sent from the book and exchange it for a small amount or price, those will consume not into their bellies but fire and Allah Azza wa Jal will not speak to them on the day of judgment nor will he purify them and they will receive a painful punishment. Now that small price, now although this was sent talking about the Jews and how they dealt with their book, yet the scholar said it applies to anyone who conceals knowledge and conceals the truth. Now this small price is not always translated into money. It can be a worldly gain. But not necessarily in terms of money. It can be a position. And it also can be following a desire. What's the truth? The truth is this. He knows that it's not the truth. What is the knowledge in this? What, Islam, what does Islam say about this? It says this. Well, he knows that Islam doesn't say this. And it can be personal safety and security. He's scared something might happen to him if he says the truth, if he says the correct verdict or ruling on a matter. Nowadays, we see this. And it's been through generations taking different forms. We have this issue of women's rights. So under pressure, and thinking mistakenly and wrongfully, thinking that if we say things that do not exist in Islam, women have this right. Well, Islam doesn't give them this right. Oh, women don't have to do this. Why are you stripping her from this right? Women don't have to wear hijab. It's her right to be covered. It's her right. To be chased. It's her right to protect herself from the punishment of Allah. Why do you deprive her from her right? Under the pretext of, oh, let's be moderate. Oh, there is freedom of, of religion. Someone can be, can apostate and he's, he's free to do what he wants. In Islam, Islam does not say that. It does not give a person the right to apostate and leave Islam. Under Islamic rules, and when they are implemented, there are procedures to deal with such a person, and he is not a normal person in the community. And other things that people address in a wrong way. Now, Saying something wrong is one problem. And insisting and convincing others that falsehood is the truth is a destructive sin. Because such a person is deviating masses of people 
and is not only lying and attributing something to Allah. No, in addition to the sin, he is misguiding the masses of people who have put their trust in him. We ask Allah's protection. In the book of Imam Al Nasai, and classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet addressed a certain, a certain type of women and said that such a woman will not be looked at from, by Allah. He said, Allah will no, not look at a woman who is ungrateful to her husband. Never appreciates anything he does. She's always complaining. There are types of women who are like that. Nothing satisfy them, satisfies them. And they're always ungrateful, show no appreciation to the husband. And the Prophet ﷺ threatened saying, this type of woman will not be looked at on the Day of Judgment by Allah. Whilst on the opposite, there are women who are promised to be in Jannah. Should I not tell you about your women, meaning the women who will be amongst the women of Jannah? Then he describes a beautiful character saying, she is the compassionate woman, compassionate wife, loving, caring, appreciative to her husband. Walud, she gives birth, she's fertile, which doesn't deprive those whom Allah decrees that they're not fertile, right? And then, Al Aoudu. Al Aoudu is a woman who always goes back to her husband. The Prophet ﷺ said in another narration whether she was wronged, or she was the one at fault. She goes to him, takes him by his hand, and says, I swear by Allah, I will not go to sleep until you're pleased. This type of women will be in Jannah, as promised by the Prophet ﷺ. Contrary to the one who is ungrateful to the husband. Another narration in the book of Al-Imam Al-Nasai and also classified as authentic by Al-Albani. The Prophet ﷺ said there are three types of people who will not enter Jannah. And Allah will not look at them on the Day of Judgment. Al-Aqu, the one who is undutiful, disrespectful to his parents. وَالْمُتَرَجِّلَةُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ The masculine women who imitate men. وَالْدَّيُوثِ العاق Undutifulness to parents is one of the worst things anyone can do. And being disrespectful, as we've explained in the khutbah speaking about dutifulness and undutifulness to parents, you can refer to it and see the details. But just looking at your parents in a wrong way, rolling your eyes, making a facial expression is all included in being disrespectful to your parents, raising your voice, proving them wrong. Some people think it's smart to prove my mom wrong or my dad wrong. It shows that I'm smart. I've grown up. I'm a woman, I'm a man. See, I proved you wrong. That's being undutiful and disrespectful. Al-mutarajilatu min al-nisa. A woman who imitates men in any form. In the way they look, the way they dress, the way they walk, the way they talk, 
the way they conduct themselves, the way they behave with others, the hairstyle, all of that is included in al mutarajilatu min al nisa. And the last one is at the youth. At the youth is a person who shows no jealousy towards his honor, his women, wife, daughter, sister, mother. Right? He doesn't care. Now this is levels. The worst is that he accepts that she commits zina. A daughter having a boyfriend. It's cool. We live in the West, it's okay. She can have a boyfriend. Yes, she can have a boyfriend and you will go to hell. Now that's the worst. Right? But there are other forms that people don't understand. They are included in the definition of a dayuth. Accepting that your wife or daughter goes out without hijab or with partial hijab, the hair is showing, wearing makeup, hands showing, feet showing. That is dayatha. That is a form of dayatha, of being the youth. And I will conclude with the last type. And this is reported by an Imam Ahmed and classified as authentic by Al Albani. The Prophet وسلم, said, Allah will not, look, will not look at the sleeve who does not perform his ruku' and his sujood properly. There are people who are calm and relaxed, but as soon as they say, Allahu Akbar, everything is turbo. Tak, 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 tak. Full speed. They cannot wait to finish salah. When they are in qiyam, after going up from ruku', it's hardly up and then going down again. When they go down to ruku', it's barely down and they go up again. When there's sujood, it's like there's a charcoal on the floor. They touch and go up. The Prophet wasallam, when he saw a man doing so, he told him three times, and this is a famous hadith, Go back and repeat your salah, you have not prayed. He didn't say your salah is wrong. He said, you, are, you have not prayed, this is not a salah. Three times until that man said, I swear by the one who has sent you with the truth, this is the only way I know to pray. Teach me. And then he taught him. And of the things he taught him is to be calm in salah. When you go to ruku'ah, be submissive, wait until the bones settle in their places, the joints settle in their places. When you go up, likewise, when you go to sujood, after all, you are in a meeting with Allah, you're addressing Allah. Why are you in a hurry? Anything outside salah is in his hand, so why rush? Ask him to facilitate it and relax. Don't be deprived. From Allah looking at you on the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, time is still there. We're alive. These are some of the classes or categories of people who will receive this punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal, who will be deprived from being spoken to by Allah or looked at. You know, the worst thing that can happen to anyone. It's for Allah to forsake him on that day. Because that's the day when you need Allah the most. That's the final stage after which it's either hell or Jannah. Yes, believers will be cleansed and then go out and be admitted into Jannah. But who can tolerate fire for a split of a second? let alone days or months or years. We ask Allah's forgiveness. Allahumma ghfir lana, wa tahirna, aafina.